Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. Now today we're doing a CPU showdown with the i7-7700K, a KB Lake CPU, versus the i7-6900K, a Broadwell E CPU. So this one will be quite interesting and it's my first KB Lake video, so let's talk about what's new with KB Lake. So you get not much really, native USB 3.1 support, a bit better power efficiency, better overclocking, which is always nice, and higher default speeds. Now it's also coming with the new Z270 chipset. So what's new on Z270? Well, basically you get four more high-speed I.O. and PCIe 3.0 lanes, which is, you know, that's quite good. USB 3.1 Gen 2 support and Intel Optane support. But aside from that, really, there are a few more things on both the CPU and the chipset, but those are kind of like the main ones most of you guys are going to be interested in. So now let's compare the two CPUs to each other, the 7700K and the 6900K. So these are both 14 nanometer CPUs. They both take DDR4 memory. The 7700K is obviously on the Z270 chipset and Broadwell E, the 6900K is on the X99 chipset. The i7-7700K comes with 4 cores and 8 threads, compare that to the 6900K's 8 core and 16 threads. Now uh, speeds wise, this is where it gets a bit different from previous generations, so quite high speeds here for KB Lake. The 7700K is coming with a 4.2 GHz base clock and 4.5 GHz turbo clock from the factory. That's getting pretty high. The 6900K, however, is quite a bit lower, coming with a 3.2 GHz base clock and 3.7 GHz turbo clock. TDP wise, the 7700K is coming with a 91 watt TDP and the 6900K has a 140 watt TDP. Now the 7700K also comes with a smaller cache, so 8 megabytes to the 6900K's 20 megabytes. It's also coming with less memory lanes, 2, as opposed to the 4 you get on Broadwell E. Less PCI lanes, you're only getting 16 PCI lanes max with the 7700K compared to the 40 with the 6900K. Price wise, there's also a big difference between these two CPUs. The i7 7700K is coming in at 549 New Zealand dollars over at Playtech compared to the 1699 New Zealand dollar price tag of the 6900K. So you could basically buy three 7700Ks and it would still be slightly cheaper than buying a single 6900K CPU. Now both of these can be overclocked, which I did. The uh, 7700K went up to 4.8 gigahertz very comfortably, and the 6900K went to 4.2 gigahertz comfortably. Those weren't really the max, but those were the uh, safe maximums that uh, I can get out of both of them very easily with no worries of having any blue screens or anything like that. Now let's talk about the specs of the two PCs we're going to be using. So for the KB Lake testing, I'm using Playtex Rogue Gaming PC. So this is a gorgeous system. It's featuring Corsair's Crystal Series 570X RGB mid-tower case with that nice tempered glass. Now uh, motherboard-wise, it's coming with the Aorus Z270X Gaming 5 motherboard. And cooler-wise, it has the Corsair Hydro Series H80i V2. Memory-wise, you have 16 gigabytes, that's 2 times 8 gigs, DDR4 2666, dual channel memory, this is the LED Corsair Vengeance, looks very nice. GPU-wise, they're both going to be running the G1 Gaming GTX 1070. Power supply-wise, it has the HX750i, and over on, oh, sorry, and the storage-wise, we can't forget that, it has a uh, 512 gigabyte Intel M.2 SSD, so that makes it look really clean. Now, over on my rig, the uh, 6900K rig, it's obviously featuring a uh, 760T case, as you can see by the big window. It looks very nice. Uh, this is a full tower case, very, very big case. Now, uh, motherboard-wise, has the MSI X99A Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard, and it's been cooled by the Corsair H115i cooler. Now, I will note none of these, neither of these CPUs uh, were thermal throttling or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about that. Memory-wise, I'm running Corsair Dominator Platinum 32GB kit. That's at 2800MHz. 
Power supply wise, I have the Corsair HX 1000i. Uh, SSD wise, my main SSD is the Intel 750 series 400 gigabyte. That's very, very powerful. And overall, I think my case also looks very good, but oh, that Playtech Rogue system, that is a beautiful looking machine. So with all that said and done, let's jump into the benchmarks, which are a mix of productivity and gaming, and see how these two CPUs perform. And we're back so that's pretty much what we expected in productivity the 6900k runs away with it that's exactly what we thought would happen it has double the cores double the threads and of course it's going to be the better one when it comes to video editing in terms of render times and photo editing and everything like that that's what it's made for productivity but as you see when we went into gaming it was the same they scored the same well within the margin of error anyways so that's what I've been telling you guys for a very long time. When it comes to buying a CPU, do not get Broadway Lee if all you're gonna be doing is gaming because there's absolutely no point in getting it. Only get it if you're someone like me who does a mix of gaming and productivity stuff. Now the 7700K does well, but nobody with a Skylake CPU should be upgrading to it. There really is no point unless your Skylake CPU is just a horrendous overclocker, then maybe you should think about it. Otherwise, I think people on older Intel CPUs would be the ones that would benefit the most from upgrading to KB Lake. So not really a huge upgrade over Skylake, uh, but it is a slight, it's an incremental upgrade going from Skylake to KB Lake. Now I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.